Alright, hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, hopefully you found my tutorials uh, pretty helpful so far. So let's jump into today's tutorial and it's chemistry, you know, yay, we all love chemistry. So um, today my question is, boron is an element that exists as two isotopes, boron 11 and boron 10. What is the relative abundance of each of these isotopes and express your answer as a percentage. Now this is a pretty typical introductory um, chemistry problem, you know, say like in grade 11, and it's, it's mostly part of like the first couple, of, I think the first unit, if I remember correctly, and um, once you know how to do these problems, they're super easy, it takes you, you can probably do like 10 in 10 minutes, and, um, but we're just going to go through it, you know, like we'll go through it slowly, and then, you know, we can discuss as usual any issues or any problems surrounding this problem. So let's get started. I like to start remember with an underlining any given pieces of information. So just by reading this question, I know that we're talking about boron, oh that's huge, uh, we're talking about boron 11 and boron 10. So those are the two isotopes I'm talking about. Now what does boron 11 and boron 10 mean? Essentially boron 11, so we're just reviewing our isotopes here, just means that this, this isotope of boron has an atomic mass of 11 atomic mass units, right? So that's all it means. And so the same goes for boron 10. It just means that it has an atomic mass of 10 atomic mass units. So that's all boron 11, boron 10 mean, right? So I'm just, I'm just writing B11 and B10 because that's the, that's the symbol you find in the periodic table, right? So we have this information. We have 11 atomic mass units and 10 atomic mass units. What else can we find? Well, we can always go back to our periodic table. You know, it's probably the most important than you'll ever have as a resource in chemistry. And we can see the actual, the, the relative atomic mass for just boron. I'm not talking about isotopes here, I'm just talking about boron that is found on the periodic table. So we can see from the periodic table, it's 10.811. So that is the atomic mass of boron. So we can also write that down, you know, just, just that's another piece of given information. So um, just boron itself, it's, we found from the periodic table 10.811 atomic mass units, right? So here's three pieces of given information. But hey, how do we find like a percentage from this? Like, what am I supposed to do? The best way, you know, start start off your problem this way. I, um, if you've seen my previous videos, I always like to write like a little statement. So I'm gonna start off with this. I'm gonna say let x uh, be the fraction of boron. 10. Now at this point it doesn't matter if you want to make x the fraction of boron 11 it doesn't matter I'm just gonna say boron 10 um, but you know either or whatever it doesn't matter so I'm just gonna say boron 10 at this point so now obviously I mean we know that boron 10 and boron 11 so there's only two isotopes of boron we're talking about S and they together make just boron, the one that's found on the periodic table. So it's obvious that both of them together make 100% of boron, right? You know, so there's a certain percentage um, of boron 11, and there's a certain percentage of boron 10, and together they make, you know, 100% uh, of boron. So we know that boron 11 plus boron 10 equals 100% boron. So we know that, right? But as a fraction, we're going to say x is a fraction of boron 10. And this can only mean that, um, uh, so the leftover fraction, which would be 1 minus x, so then 1 minus x is the fraction of boron 11, right? So that's how I would write this uh, little statement out. So again, if, if, if this part is confusing you a little, think of it at this way. So x percentage of boron 10 plus x percentage of boron 11 or y percentage of boron 11 gives you 100% of boron, right? So, but I'm not talking, in, in my statement, I'm not talking in terms of percentages, I'm talking um, as fractions, right? So when I talk about fractions, uh, it's so 100% of boron, right? So as a fraction, 100% of boron would be just one, right? Now, if, I, if I'm already saying that, you know, x is boron 10, so what, I'm, what, do I, what am I left with? So obviously 1 minus x must be born 11, right? So that's how I'm getting this statement. And it's going to be like this for every single one of these problems you do. You know, you, you choose one of your isotopes, 
So I don't know if it was like rubidium, you choose one of the rubidium isotopes to be x and the other rubidium isotope to be 1 minus x, right? So that's always how you set up every single one of these problems. So um, I have this right now. So what can I write? I can now write, and I also know, as I went back, I also know uh, boron itself has a relative atomic mass of 10.811. So I can now write this. I can now say that, so the entire boron, 11, uh, boron just boron itself, so 10.811 um, atomic mass units. So I'm just going to say, you can, you, can, you can either write atomic mass units or you can write the symbol mu. Mu is like this unified atomic mass units, right, if you want to write that. So just for convenience, you know, conserve space and to make it quicker, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to write mu. So that just means unified atomic mass units. So 10.811 equals, now we know that the, fr uh, the fraction of boron 10 is x, so we're going to take x multiplied by 10 um, unified atomic mass units, which is the, obviously the mass of boron 10. And then we're also, we're also going to take um, 1 minus x, which is a fraction of boron 11, multiplied by the mass of boron 11, which is 11 unified atomic mass units. So now I have a really, really, really simple, um, you know, e algebraic expression set up. So obviously we can solve this. So 10.811. And you know, at this point, I'm not going to like write the units down. So when we solve this thing, it would just be 10x, right? Um, ignore the units at this point. I'm just solving the algebraic expression here. And when we solve this part, it would part it would be just so it would be 11 minus 11x, right? Uh, really simple math. You know, you got 11. You multiply by 1. You have a, a plus 11, and then you got a minus x times 11. So it'd just be uh, minus 11x. So, I mean. Super easy, you know. You just you can really easily easily solve this. So I can, um, you know, kind of like take eleven to the other side to is uh, to kind of isolate the x's and the numbers. So that uh, moving, uh, I'm just gonna move to a new page because I'm running out of space here. That should give you um, roughly a negative zero point uh, one nine uh, and equals ten x minus 11x, right? And this part I'm just getting from um, moving the uh, 11 to the other side of the equation. So basically 10.811 minus 11, you know, roughly gives you 0 0.19. Um, now we can solve this part of the equation. It's super easy. So 0 0.19 equals negative x, right? Because 10x minus 11x, super easy, it's 11x. So uh, you can basically just, you know, because there's negative signs on both sides, so basically 0 0.19 equals x. Okay, so we've solved for x. So what does this actually mean? Well, when we go back and check our statement, we said x is the fraction of boron 10. We now know that x is 0 0.19. So we, so basically, can we, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's it's safe for us to say that the fraction of boron 10 is x, which is equal to 0 0.19. Now, remember that um, I'm not talking, uh, like, uh, the question itself was not asking for a fraction, right? I mean, we can see here, clearly asked for a percentage, right? So this is a good start to your final answer, but it's not your final answer. So the fraction of boron 10 is 0 0.19, but how do you express that as a percentage? Well, you know, if 1 is 100%, then 0 0.19 is just very simply 19%. So when you convert from, frac uh, from like a fraction to um, uh, a percentage, all you have to think about is if it's 0 0.19, it's basically like saying 19, um, it's basically 19% uh, because you say if you had a 0 0.5, you know it'd be 50%, right? If it's half of 100, it's 0 0.5. So 0 0.19 is just 19%. So that's how you um, convert back and forth, right? I mean, it's super easy. It's like, I don't know, like elementary school mathematics. So I'm not going to go through that. But so this is, this is your final answer. So uh, the fraction of uh, 
boron 10 is 0.19 and which roughly which translates into 19 percent um, so what about boron 11 so there's two ways you can solve for boron 11 you know that um, 1 minus x is the fraction of boron 11 right so we know that 1 minus 0 0.19 we can we, um, since we know what x is right x we found was 0 0.19 uh, so 1 minus x would be 1 minus 0 0.19 and that would roughly give you um, 81% right uh, not 81% that would give you 0 0.81 which again you would translate into 81% right or there's an easier way uh, since we already figured out here that boron 10 is 19% right is, is exists as 19% of the total amount of boron there is all we can do is we know that boron 11 is 100% minus boron 10's percentage which is 19% so you just get the fra uh, the percentage straight away you don't have to like translate from a fr uh, fraction if you if you're not comfortable with that so this would be the percentage of percentage are born 11 right so again there's two ways you can do that you can do it this way if you know you if you really like to go through the whole mathematical process but you're, you're gonna get the same answer regardless because in this case you're just taking a fraction which is one and in this case you're just taking the percentage which is 100 so they're both mean the same thing um, in this case you're just gonna have to remember to round off your uh, not round up translate your final answer into a percentage because that's what the final uh, answer should be in because that's what your question was asking right in a percentage and um, in this case you can just you just you know you're working with percentages you don't have to translate into anything you, you end up with a percentage answer so that's you know pretty much it and um, just to be you know just to have a nice final answer you would write this you know on your test or assignment so um, therefore you know you'd be the relative um, abundance of uh, boron 10 is 19 percent and the relative abundance of boron 11 is 81 percent so this is i mean you this is probably the easiest chemistry problem you'll come across it's so easy this is you know just go through it this way write down uh you know kind of like try and imagine like B11 and B10 basically means that um, I'm going through, you know, 11, I'm dealing with 11 uh, atomic mass units and 10 atomic mass units. Don't, please don't forget to go back to the periodic table and actually look at, you know, the final, um, not the final, or the actual relative uh, atomic mass for boron on the periodic table, because those are the one. that's the one you're going to need, because that is the actual uh, um, relative atomic mass, right? It, it's what... Uh, boron 10 and boron uh, 11 together make just boron which has an atomic mass of 10.811 right so make sure you go back to a periodic table if that's not given don't freak out you know like oh how am i going to find that you know just simply go back to a periodic table and you know look at your uh, whatever element you're looking for and um you know this part again like i always say your statement is kind of optional but you know in this case i truly think it's really going to help you out so if you kind of define like you know write a little statement and define that x is a fraction of this isotope and you know then one minus x is a fraction of your other isotope so it's you know it's going to help you work through it and be like you know i'm pretty sure you, all of you you're going to be comfortable working to with like percentages and fractions so that's fine set up your algebraic expression it's super easy you know make sure you just double check and solve it correctly in this case it was super easy you know most of them are um, some of them you know the ones with bigger atomic masses you're, they'll have like you know 200 atomic mass units and stuff so you know maybe keep a calculator on hand if you need to otherwise you know they're simple they're always simple algebraic expressions which you just kind of have to manipulate you know move across you know uh, minus or divide and stuff like that and um, your, le you, your answer when you solve your algebraic expression is going to be in a fraction. So please, please, please convert your fraction into a percentage because mostly that's what your final uh, answer uh, is supposed to be in. So that's it for this video. And, you know, uh, keep, 
you know, keep on coming back to my channel, you know, comment or whatever, and I'll see you guys next time.